Peter Garcia Cooler folks, he is going abroad. He's uh, leaving New Zealand rugby, and uh, it begs the question: Did New Zealand just cap him to keep him out of Fiji's hands? That is a debate which tends to happen a wee bit. Um, well, it's been brought up since, ever since he kind of got dropped by the All Blacks, to be honest. But um, yeah, we're going to go through it. I've had a look at the most recently capped All Blacks guys in the last five years to see if it is uncommon or common for guys to kind of get into the All Blacks, get a cap or two, and then get the ass. Excuse my language. Um, and then, yeah, what's the general fate of the overseas-born guys? And uh, which players kind of made it in the last five years? We'll see if there's any kind of trend. So, so cool if you didn't know. Uh, born in Fiji. Came to New Zealand, ends up in the, the Chiefs, does really well, uh, plays for the All Blacks, gets a couple of caps, and then gets dropped out of the squad. And uh, as I said, a bit of a conspiracy theory as to whether the All Blacks just capped him to keep him out of Fiji's hands. Well, first thing I'm going to say is there's a lot of guys. Like, I looked at the All Blacks website, all the guys capped since 2018. I think I can count 35 guys. Uh, there's a load. The majority, more than half, are still in single-digit caps. Obviously, the guys who were capped this year, it's going to be hard for them to get in double digits. But there's also a lot of guys who got one cap and then never made it back into the All Blacks. It's very common. Josh Yuane, Brett Cameron, Cullen Grace, Gareth Evans, Pete Umanga Jensen, Matt Proctor, Aiden Ross. All of these guys have only got one All Blacks cap to their name. Uh, Cullen Grace only got three minutes. Um, Brett Cameron got nine. So some of these guys genuinely got a cap and then have not made it back. Aiden Ross, I think, is the most recent of these guys. But Umanga Jensen, Evans, Grace, and Yuani, who are still in Super Rugby, so still eligible for the All Blacks, um, have not been in the All Blacks squad for a wee while, at least a couple of years. So, um, yeah, it's, it's first glance, man, it's, it's very common to get into the All Blacks and then they decide, nah, you can't displace the incumbent guy. Basically, two cap guys, there's more, Fakatawa, Lord, so Akula, like I mentioned, Talea, who is still active, um, Fango, Nuku, three cap guys, Tohuri Rangi, Roj Tu, Vasashek, Peter Feta, some of these guys are still active, and then like Alex Hodgman, he's one guy who's already come and pretty much gone, even though he's still in New Zealand rugby. Jackson Himopo got five caps and then headed off to Japan. Uh, Fletcher Newell's still active. He's got five caps. Braden Enor's still active. He's got six. Um, but a lot of these guys who I just read out have already fallen out of favor, and they've only gotten a few caps. So the first, the, the idea that they only capped Soakula, and I'm biased, man, because I'm an All Blacks fan, but the idea they capped him and limited him to two caps just to keep him out of Fiji's hands doesn't seem right just on the fact that there's a load of other guys who also got a brief appearance and then didn't make it that just seems to be a thing with the all blacks what about if we target it down to the overseas born guys and i'm talking about the guys who pretty much came to new zealand for the purposes of playing rugby the likes of a falau Fakatava, you know born in tonga comes to new zealand on a scholarship and then uh, eventually makes it to the all blacks he's got two caps but i think he's still in the long-term plans a uh, talented guy um, injured at the moment, so I think that's why he's limited to two caps. Saul Kulu is another one. He's got two, like I mentioned. Already going to France because he's in his late 20s. If he wants to make a bit of bank, it's probably the right time to do it. Um, Samasota Tokiaho, Tongan guy, comes to New Zealand again for rugby on a scholarship. He's got 21 caps. He's one of the most capped guys on this list. So, yeah, that's um, that's a good thing. If he's going to choose the All Blacks, that he, that he gets capped by the All Blacks. Seve Reese, Fijian guy, 23 caps. Frizzell, uh, Tongan guy, 25 caps. So some of these guys who've come from uh, from the Pacific uh, are among the most capped guys. There doesn't seem to be a trend of taking a guy from the Pacific, capping him, and then not playing him. Most of these guys have gotten a lot of game time. Some would argue at the, the cost of um, someone with more connection to New Zealand. I mean, that's kind of a debate for another day. You can decide what you think is right and wrong for, for players representing countries. These guys are obviously all eligible, so they're eligible. But um, yeah, most of these guys seem to be getting game time. Soakula seems to be the exception. Most of these guys who came to New Zealand for rugby uh, in school and then eventually made their way to the All Blacks have gotten a lot of game time. Just seems to be a thing. What about loose forwards? Do the Lucys tend to make it? Is he just unlucky because he's a Lucy? Well, Frizzell and uh, Papali'i. And uh, Satutu, these guys were all Lucy's. 
they've all had a decent amount of caps. Uh, so it's possible to get in. Uh, Jacobson and Blackadder also got a couple of caps, but their period of time has kind of been affected by injury. And then there's a couple of guys in Gareth Evans and Cullen Grace who are single-digit cap guys. So it's a bit of a lottery uh, for Lucy's, to be honest. The most likely position, seemingly from this list in the last five years, if you want to get into the All Blacks and keep your spot, it's to be a prop. Yeah. Uh, of the top four guys on my list... Three of them, in terms of the amount of caps they've accumulated in the last five years, three of them are props. Tuinukuafe, Ta'aval, and Lomax. All these guys uh, are big cap getters at 20+. Plus. And, um, yeah, George Bauer as well is just, just under. He's in the top. One, two, three, four, five, sixth. So, yeah. And interestingly, like, Tyrell Lomax has got connections to Australia. He played Australian under 20s because he was born over there. Kiwi dad. But he could have played for Australia. Angus Ta'aval, I think, could have played for a couple of countries other than New Zealand. George Bauer certainly could have played for Fiji. Uh, Kautu Nukwafe could have played for Tonga. Like, we're talking mostly New Zealand-born guys with, like, um, or like Lomax overseas-born, but Kiwi parent, like Tua Nukwafe, Ta'aval, uh, Bauer, all New Zealand-born, but with parents from overseas. But, um, yeah, New Zealand didn't screw those guys either. They gave them a bunch of caps. So, I mean... Seems like a bit of a conspiracy theory to me, but like I said, I am a, uh, I'm an All Blacks fan, so check it for yourself if you like. I mean, I had a look at the news around the time, and, and prior to Soa Kula getting caught up for, for the All Blacks, when he was still uh, uncapped, the Fiji Times did an article about what Soa Kula's future was going to be like, and they basically said in their article, if he chooses New Zealand, it's going to be an uphill battle, because he's up against the likes of Asabia. So, it's kind of not... Maybe surprising that he didn't displace Savia as the, the best number eight in New Zealand. Um, and then, uh, oh, I mean, also Fiji at the time had a bunch of Lucy's as well when this article was written. Um, but also, since he's been capped, and there was a bit of a stir about it, like Simon Rairoa-Louis, the um, general high-performance manager for Fiji, basically said that New Zealand were not like poaching Fiji's best players. It's just a bunch of guys only get a few caps for the All Blacks because it's a hard place to get caps. I think he's right. That's coming from a Fijian rugby, member of the Fijian rugby management team. So I don't know, man. You guys let me know what you reckon. Uh, I couldn't find any other examples of overseas born and raised players who got a cap and then were discarded. There may be others in the, in the period greater than the last five years, but certainly... It doesn't seem like a recent trend. Most of the guys who've been, like, who qualify for New Zealand via residency, ended up getting a bunch of caps. And there's certainly a long list of players who only make it briefly into the All Blacks and then, uh, and then aren't able to kind of really cement their spot and surpass the guys who are the existing candidates. But anyway, you guys let us know your thoughts. Check out the article. Uh, which I've written up for, for Planet Rugby for this one because it's probably got a few more details which I have missed here. been uh, happily working with them for, for the last few weeks. It's been a pleasure. But um, yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts and um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.